Hey, what's up? It is Taz Daddy from Power 99. I wanted to do this because uh, Miss Woods asked me to, and you know, I'll do anything for fellow Temple Hour. What's up to you? Yo, so uh, we're going to get into this. I don't have a lot of time to type, so I'm just going to answer all the questions. Number one, where are you from originally? I'm from Philly. This is my home, born and raised. This is this is all I know. Um, why did I choose Temple? Because it was one of the greatest schools in the country, and Bill Cosby attended university. You see, oh. Number three, what year did I graduate? 1999 and 2000, I majored in broadcasting, telecommunications, and mass media. Uh, was the first, I was in the first BTMM class uh, that started in 1995. Where did I get my start after graduation? I was doing mornings at PHI. I did overnights at RTI. I had already been in the business since I was nine years old, so I already had a job uh, coming out. Uh, ironically, I left... Um, PHI and went to Power 99. Then I left and went down through the South and did my thing. And now I'm back 10 years later, son. Wow. Meanwhile, in between, wow. Uh, what's a normal day look like for me in my current position? My day starts at around 5.30 a.m. and doesn't end until it's over with. That sometimes it means 13, 14, 15 hour days. But social media is a constantly moving thing. And so we uh, do as much as we possibly can in order to make it happen. Um is this my first time in the Philadelphia market? No. <laughs> this is my home, man. I, I went to Martin Luther King. I worked at XPN, DAS. Um, let's see here. I, I interned at Q102. Um, what, where else? I've worked, gosh, I've worked just about every uh, every station you can think of um, in the city I've worked at. So it is what it is. Um, how does it feel to be back in the city where I attended college? It feels absolutely Amazing to be back home, but for some reason I have not given a guest lecture at Temple. What's up with that, Owls? No love for the chant? Gotta be kidding me on that. Um, what would I like to share with you uh, concerning the lifestyle of an on-air personality? Is it all glamour? Depending on the air personality, the answer is yes. Uh, no, seriously, um, it's not that it's necessarily all glamour. It's a lot of hard work if you are dedicated to your craft. And there are some personalities who aren't, and there are some who are. Uh, I think it's important to understand that this is like any other profession. You get out of it what you put into it. And uh, I'm a hard worker, so for me, it's great. So everything that I get, I am very thankful for. I work very hard for. I enjoy uh, talking to people. And I mean, you have to be a special kind of person to be a radio personality, because basically what you're saying is, I'm in a box for four to five hours. And what I have to say is so important that thousands upon thousands and possibly millions of people will want to hear it. You got to be a little bit high and out your mind to think that way. And I think that's what makes a lot of radio personalities different. And, uh, able to do uh, what they need to do. When did I decide that this career was for me? Uh, when I started at XPN uh, at nine years old, I knew that this is what I wanted to do because beforehand I wanted to be an attorney. Then I realized I could get paid to argue and I didn't have to wear a suit. Duh, winning. Um, what would I go back and, and, and tell the greener me about the path I decided to take? Shut your mouth, Taz. Uh, somebody told me once, uh, he said, uh, Tony Richards, he told me, he said, Taz, the greatest thing about you is your mouth, and the worst thing about you is your mouth. Um, sometimes I was so worried about winning an argument or, or winning the battle that I lost the war. Um, I would tell the greener me to enjoy the experience a lot more and enjoy, uh, you know, being youthful and enjoy all of those things, but... The thing that I liked about the greener me is the same thing that I like about uh, me now. Uh, it's that I'm hungry. I was always hungry. And I would tell myself to never lose that hunger uh, because there was a point where I lost that hunger and I wound up homeless. But I'm not homeless no more. <laughs> um, let's see what else we have here. Uh, knowing then what I know now, would I still take this path? Absolutely, because it's because of this path. It's because of radio that I was able to do TV, that I was able to be in movies, that I was able to do uh, reality shows, that I uh, was allowed to perfect my craft and to branch off into other things like being a uh, motivational speaker. I am very comfortable in front of crowds when I wasn't always. Although I still get nervous, I'm still a lot more comfortable and I'm able to do what I need to do. And so 
I would not have given this up for anything in the world. Uh, what other activities are am I involved with outside of radio station? Um, well, I have the Taz Daddy Foundation, which basically helps uh, young people understand the importance of literacy. And uh, I also am a empowerment speaker. I'm an author. My third book, Common Sense Ain't Common, it's available right now at the books tab at tazdaddy.com. Uh, let's see what else. Uh, what do I look for in an intern? Somebody who's willing to outwork me. If I'm here at 6, you need to have, you here at five, have your ass here at 5.30. Somebody who understands the importance of doing the grunt work, understanding the paying of dues. A lot of interns come in, a lot of college kids come in with this sense of entitlement, you know, whereas though they feel as though they, just because they are a temple out, that that automatically entitles them to some kind of inalienable right to be here. And it doesn't work like that because there's a million and one interns, there's a million and one schools, but can you do everything that's required of you and then go above and beyond the call of duty? I demand a lot from my interns, but my interns will all tell you their experience they had with me was well worth all the things that I put them through. And you need that, man. I got coffee, I got dry cleaning, I walked dogs, I did a whole lot of crap that wasn't necessarily conducive to learning, but I still looked at the opportunity to learn because I would get all that stuff done fast so I could bring my ass right back in the studio and be like, what are y'all doing? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So that's what I look for. Am I, in currently, am I currently in need of interns? Yes. God, yes. I need interns not only for here, but uh, for my projects outside of here. So I'm always looking. Feel free to email me, tazdaddy at gmail.com, T-A-Z-Z-D-A-D-D-Y at gmail.com. When did my moment of clarity happen when I realized I hit my stride? I don't feel like I've hit my stride yet, but I will tell you my breaking point. Uh, when I became homeless and I lost everything and I, I realized that a lot of people in this business, any kind of entertainer, sometimes feels like all they have is their job. And once I realized that without my 2,500 square foot apartment, without, you know, uh, the pretty girls and, and the, uh, the rap star friends or whatever the case may be, I was still Taz. And as long as I had that and my belief in God, I could do anything. And once I realized that it wasn't the stuff that people try to make bigger than what it is, sort of like if you've ever seen Dumbo, there was this magic feather. That really wasn't magic at all. Dumbo's big ears are what made Dumbo fly. Same kind of situation. It is my ability, it is my God-given talent that allows me to succeed. And if I lose everything, I can get it all back because I realize that grace, greatness is within me, not necessarily in a building, in a title, in a woman, in a car, any of those material things. It's about what God put inside of me. Uh, what advice would I give someone starting their career today? Learn every department. Too many companies are cutting back, and it's not enough to just be a good jock anymore. You have to have some skills. You have to understand what is going on in the industry. You have to understand what makes sense for each department to be successful. And a lot of times we really don't do that because we're so busy worried about the glamour and glitz. Who inspired me professionally and personally? Uh, I was inspired by Golden Boy. I was inspired by Jocko Henderson. I was inspired by Frankie Crocker because Frankie Crocker was the truth. Um, Frankie Crocker would come on the radio and say, Frankie Crocker's not on your radio. Your radio is not on. I like that confidence. He had a real glide in his stride. He knew what he was doing. He felt like he was driving the bus. And that's one of the most important things a personality needs. They need to have that sense of control because the listeners want to know that you know what you're doing. And uh, they can smell that fear on you like dogs and bees. And so those are some of the people who inspired me professionally. Personally, I'm inspired by my mother. Anybody who could, and, and this is my mommy right here. I love my mommy. She awesome. Uh, I am inspired by anybody who can raise two crazy boys in the hood and do it all with a smile and good credit. Lord have mercy, my mother has A1 credit. I don't know how the hell she did it, but she did. And she always encouraged me. You know, there are, not, there are not too many people who will work a 10 hour day, pick their kid up, take them to a radio station, bring their other kid from basketball practice and do this each and every single day. My mother was really the uh, the fuel that gave me the ability to go after my dreams. And so I'm extremely inspired by my mother, um, my uh, my good friend, Les Brown, who's a motivational speaker. I, I saw him first when I was 10 years old. I started reading his books, watching his specials and 
Uh, he mentored me, and he also wrote the forward for my new book. He is the world's foremost um, motivational speaker, so I'm inspired by both of them. Um, how important is social media, and where do I see it taking communication as we know it? Um, I'm the director of social media. It's my job. This job was created for me, and I love the fact that things are constantly changing and evolving. And the one thing that sets the radio industry apart from a lot of other industries is that we don't fight the change. We embrace it. When everybody wanted to uh, get off of records, we were like, okay, so we're doing CDs now. No problem. When people got off of CDs and started using computer automated systems, we were like, no problem. When people started on MySpace and then Facebook and, and Twitter, we're like, okay, no problem. We go where our audience is, and that's the importance. You can't run from progress. You have to embrace progress, and if you're lucky, you can be progress. And speaking of which, if you want to progress a little further, you can follow me on Twitter at TazDaddy. That's T-A-Z-Z-D-A-D-D-Y. Uh, I hope that answers all your questions. Believe in yourself. Understand what you bring to the table, and nothing can stop you. Hope you enjoyed it. I uh, hope that makes a lot of sense to you. Um, happy, happy, happy to be a Temple Owl. Love y'all to death. And um, it's Spring Fling Weekend, baby. Doses.